What are you drinking, Dennis? This is celery, uh, um, cucumber, spinach, olive oil, avocado oil. A little bit of motor oil to keep the digestive tract <laughs> working. Yeah. I've probably gotten COVID four times, but this has been so strong, it just wipes it out. All right, I have with me people that you are much more excited to see than you are excited to see me. We have uh, a large chunk of our cast here. This is a scene that takes place during episode three of season two. And uh, season or episode three of season two is all in one location. It is all uh, essentially backstage while Jesus is uh, healing a long line of people. And the disciples are taking turns helping him while the rest of the disciples and the followers take a rest and they eat, and so we kind of see them throughout the day. We've got all of the people who are in this section of the script together right now, and I'm just gonna give first names because uh, I might end up botching someone la someone's last name and I don't wanna do that. So uh, in no particular order, other than what I can see on my screen, uh, we're gonna start with uh, Thaddeus, who's played by Giovanni Cairo. I already broke my rule by saying a last name. So uh, it's Giovanni. Uh, hey, Noah yes. is playing Andrew. Vanessa is playing Mother Mary. Kean is playing Big James. Joey, who you remember from episode five, is back with us, uh, spoiler alert, and uh, is playing Thomas. And Liz is back, of course, playing Mary Magdalene. I have Yasmin. Is it Yasmin? Is it Yasmin or Yasmin? It's Yasmin, but I mean, I'll take okay. anything. I'm not okay. attached. Right. Well, I am attached, and it's a Yasmin, so I'll take it. Um, then we have Paris, who plays Matthew. Shahar, who is... Are, Shahar, are you in Israel right now? I am somewhere in the world, uh, okay. in the middle of the night. <laughs> okay. I, won't, I won't give away your location then, but uh, Shahar, who's playing Simon, and uh, George is playing John. So welcome, everyone. I think I've got every... I think I covered everyone. So, all right, now I will get into... Uh, page 16 of episode three of season two. Exterior campsite evening. Series of shots of eating, cleaning, scrubbing of hands, etc. More dozing. Thomas returns from his shift and replaces Philip. Eventually, Simon, Andrew, and Big James return sweaty and dragging. Mary Mother hands plates of food to little James and Thaddeus, and they take the plates with them as they leave for their shifts. Simon grabs a container of water and after a few long sips, dumps it on his head and face. Then he, Andrew, and Big James grab food and sit. Everyone is sitting, mostly around the campfire, a few other torches and lamps provide light for those sitting further away. The series of shots ends. They are around the campfire, but they're clearly on the verge of sleeping from a long day. Heads resting on hands, some lying on backs or side. Mother Mary and the other two women continue to handle food and cleaning. Andrew, I need a mental break. Do one of your meaningless question games. No, they're not meaningless. They're interesting. I've got one I've been thinking about lately. What would you do for unlimited money? Or what would you give up in order to have all the money you could ever want for the rest of your life? Meaning, would I do something painful? Yes, or crazy? Do you run through the marketplace with no clothes, screaming? Of course not. I'd be killed by a soldier. Just it would be immodest. It would be a sin. Uh, fine, fine. Something that wasn't a sin. Would you give up your left hand if you would be rich for the rest of your life? Maybe not a full hand, but a couple of fingers, sure. What about love? Would you give up getting married? I don't know. Simon, is it worth it? Absolutely. But you'll never be so lucky to get someone like Eden, so yeah, take the money. I have never had much money my whole life, nothing very happy. I don't expect we'll have much money for as long as we're following him. And you had some money before, yes? Are you happier now or then? Ask Matthew. John. Oh, that's a bad question. 
You brought up money. Matthew's had it. We haven't. Yeah. I feel better now. I don't know if that means happy. It's not polite to talk about personal money. Just a question. I think about it sometimes. And I feel guilty. For what? For thinking about things I shouldn't. For wanting things I, I shouldn't care so much about. Sometimes I, I feel like I'm living someone else's life. <laughs> like when I look at myself from the outside, it doesn't always feel like me. It feels, it feels like someone who's trying to live up to the heroes of our history. As if I have to do something great, but I know I'm not great. I feel that more now being with him. I understand. I feel like I need to not make any more mistakes. How do you think I felt? You must feel it every day, no? Not anymore. He always reassured me and God always made me feel as though I shouldn't be burdened. So how did you feel when it happened? And what happened? His birth, even before that. How did you know and when did you know who he was? I don't know. We're all tired. Do you want to hear all that? <laughs> well, nothing about it was easy. I can tell you that. It was in my hometown. My mother wasn't there. We had no midwife. I don't know if I'm ready to give all the details, perhaps another time. But I do remember this. When Joseph handed him to me, It was nothing like I expected. It was like everything I'd heard about having a baby, but I'd expected this to be completely different. Do you mean? I had to clean him off. He was covered in... I will be polite. He needed to be claimed. And he was cold. And he was crying. And he needed my help. My help. A teenager from Nazareth. It actually made me think for just one moment, is this really the son of God? Joseph. My husband told me later he briefly thought the same thing. But we knew he was. I don't know what I expected, but he was crying. He needed me. And I wondered how long that would last. He doesn't need me anymore. Not since we taught him how to walk and eat. <laughs> he hasn't needed me for a long time, I suppose. And after Joseph passed, and he rest in peace. He grew up even quicker. And I wish I could say that made me happy. Of course, as a Jew, I'm, I'm excited to see all that he does for our people. And I'm proud of him. But as a mom, makes me a little sad sometimes. So it's good to be with you all for a bit. I can find ways to help. I'll take it. Simon, when you were just with him, how much longer did it seem you would go? 
tough to tell the line was dying down, but he won't send anyone away, so we'll see. So we'll check him in. She slowly stands with the slight struggle of an older woman who's been sitting too long. She takes a couple plates from those next to her, takes them to a bench, and then walks around the trees towards the tent. They sit quiet for a moment. I didn't know he'd lost his father. I lost mine several years ago. I'll have to ask him about that. Has anyone else lost a parent? I'm sorry. Was it recent? No. It was when I was a little girl. Painful. I'm sorry. It was. But I, I didn't fully understand it right away. Eventually, it made me really angry. Which is why I left when I was young. Left home? Left everything. Everything. And tried to stop being Jewish. I tried to stop being myself. And then, as many people in our town, including some of you, uh, knew about worse things happened. Most of it is a blur, and I forgot so much of everything I'd learned as a girl. But now you can't catch up? Yes. I hope. With Matthew and Rama, you, you all are so far ahead, and you're so good at all of this. We're not as good as you think. Most of us. But you were the one with your nose in the writings, still are. Ah, a little. Not like some others. Oh, come on, you can recite half of Torah if you wanted to. Thaddeus arrives back from his shift. If you nod at him as he takes his seat. Still going. Couldn't do anymore. They said they've got it. I really I want to be a good student. I don't think any of us went to Bet Midrash. I did much study after school. That's what's so surprising about all of this. Thomas, did you? <laughs> no. I was in the family business the day after I graduated. 13 years old. I was preparing and serving food at weddings. I wasn't a student at all, believe me. I wasn't even good at praying until recently. I would get bored with it, the same thing over and over. I learned to love it as I got older. I wasn't great at any of it when I was a student. I wasn't either. I didn't like all the rules. I never struggled with it. I do what I'm told. Yes, I'm the same. I've always been a rule follower. I've always loved the history, the story, so I've always loved the rules too. Simon. <laughs> <laughs> I have my moments, okay. One time when my parents were asleep, I had meat and cheese just to see what I was missing. Have you ever done that? No, I'd feel too guilty. You'd feel guilty about everything. Right after you were born, you said sorry to Ima for causing her pain. <laughs> Forget the guilt. I was sick for days. I haven't violated a single food rule since. I tried pork once. Oh. Wow. We were traveling and we're in a Gentile market and uh, I just grabbed a piece. Really? It was marvelous. <laughs> One time on the boats, we were approaching Shabbat sunset and Abba and John finished their takes. And I had not finished getting all my fish into the barrels because I had so many. No, because you were going too slow because you were too careful. No, it was because I had so many. And you have to get them all in before the sunset, of course. Or they're out the next day. So I'm yelling at the others to help me, and they're just laughing as they walk home. And I ended up working so hard and so fast, I ended up spilling several of them back into the water. And when I was done, just in time, I was breathing so hard, I vomited on the shore. 
<laughs> and he had to wait two days to clean it up. <laughs> Sorry. I've grown to love being Jewish and I've grown to love following the law, but it can be exhausting. Following the law or being Jewish? Both. It always has been, even long before the occupation. Yes, but aren't we used to it now? Hasn't it made us stronger? I don't get it, if I'm honest. I don't know why God has allowed it. I'm going to ask him more about that, why this has been allowed for so long. It's hard to feel like the chosen people. Mm. I've been there. But it will all be worth it now, yes? The wait is over. What about you? And end scene. End scene. That is a piece from episode three of season two. Obviously on Zoom, it's not quite as powerful as when we're actually on the set, but I hope you got a little taste of it. And um, with that, we thank you for joining us for this and hope you enjoyed it yourself. Mm -hmm.